Good morning, everybody. I am, for the first time, not driving. <laughs> Lovely Anissa is driving. This is her first time driving in. Uh, no, I drove in our, our van. Oh, a little bit in our van. Okay, so but almost the first time first driving. First time in the city. First time in the city yeah. in a year, over a year. Yeah. So she is an accomplished driver. She's been driving since she was 16 years old, same as me. Mm -hmm. In Ontario, Canada, you get your driver's license at 16 years of age, and um, on my 16th birthday, I got my beginners, and then eight months later, I had my. Uh, what we call a G2 allows you to drive by yourself. And the G1 you can only drive with parents or somebody with experience. G2 you can drive by yourself. So both of us had that before we turned 17. Uh, but yeah, now she has not. And she's, uh, although when we met she had a manual transmission car, she hasn't driven one in so long she didn't feel comfortable driving the big van. So this car we're in right now uh, has been graciously provided to us by a good friend and uh, allows her to drive around a little bit and especially today today we are on route to the hospital so i can have surgery and then i need to stay there uh, for minimum two days possibly three days so this will allow her to uh, get around while i am in there so that's pretty cool other than that it's early in the morning very thirsty but i'm not allowed to drink anymore <laughs> um, normally he needs another coffee Oh, I would like another coffee, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have one this morning, so that was good. Before before my time was up, I was allowed. Uh, I'm hopeful that the surgery will go very well and that everything will work good. The biggest thing I'm worried about, I guess, would be the language barrier because I will be in a hospital by myself with presumably not too many English speakers, uh, I would think, since I am in Russia. Uh, I just read a comment this morning that says, oh, this guy's surprised. He moved halfway around the world. He's surprised there's a language barrier. No, I'm not surprised by that. Of course not. I am in Russia. I expect everyone to speak Russian. I'm actually <laughs> surprised when people speak English to me. I'm like, hey! You're, you're not worried about the language either. You're worried that they're going to take out a kidney instead of the gallbladder. <laughs> Wake up That's missing joke. kidneys. That's a yeah. joke. <laughs> you have my kidneys on a, on a veto for sale, right? It's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> no, the healthcare here seems to be very good. But, but it, I mean, obviously, you can't communicate as well as you would if you're in your own country. So it is a little bit. That's probably my biggest concern. I think everything will go fine. They seem to know exactly what they're doing. Maybe and so far, healthcare seems Russian. to be much better. You think they can program me? Maybe. Well, maybe you'll wake up being fluent. Mm -hmm. all very amusing in a different language so in the hospital room here i got a private room which is cool i don't think we paid extra for it but maybe not sure nice enough room they stuck these socks on me which is uh uh what do you call it for swelling i guess maybe blood clots too i'm not sure I had my belly shaved for the first time in my life not that i'm very hairy anyway but they shaved what was there so, waiting for surgery now. It should be in like half an hour, 45 minutes. I think they'll wheel me into surgery. Hello, everybody. Post-surgery. Everything went honky-dory fine, I think. Right? I think so, yeah. I was really groggy for a little while. It's um, a very awkward experience because uh, modesty doesn't seem to be a real important <laughs> thing around here. So I got to wear my clothes up until, well, actually before that even, I had to get these funny socks. I got these socks, they go up, uh, you know, show them my lovely socks. They go up a long ways and to go to get them, I got them at like a pharmacy thing or I don't know what, whatever it was. And they're like middle of the store, okay, drop your pants, pardon? <laughs> anyway, but they had to go take measurements to get these socks done. So I wasn't used to that. But then here at the hospital as well, uh, I get to the operating area and it's like okay take off your clothes it's like right here no gown she draped a gown over my shoulders but you're standing there completely naked and then uh you kind of try to wrap it around yourself or at least i did i'm not used to wandering around naked and then you get to the the room and i had to uh get up on the table 
And it's like, there's no modesty here. And it's a big room. There's other people in there. There's another guy being operated on. So anyway, it was uh, not not something that I would be used to. We believe in modesty and covering and, uh, yeah, even laying like this, showing you guys my shoulders, I wouldn't even do typically this stuff. Yeah, it's funny. Anyway, surgery went well. Doctor's amazing. Super nice guy. Nurse staff is great. Got a nice room here. Beautiful sunshine. The worst part of this room is there's people working over there, and I love working, and now I have to lay here and watch them work. They're fixing a roof on another building, and it's really hard to lay here and watch other people do the work. Uh, oh, the other good news is the doctor came in and said I'm allowed to get up. So I got up, I went to the bathroom, came back down. So I think everything's going well so far. I'm waiting for the air bubble everybody tells me about. Hopefully that's not too bad. If you're not familiar with that, apparently they blow up your whole belly. I can show you my decisions, I guess. So I've got these, and apparently they stuff you full of air, and then that uh, air makes its way up into your shoulders. So I'm told, I don't know, never had that before. Yeah. You've had that before? Yeah, it, it hurt really pretty bad. bad. And I think I remember Ben was complaining oh, about yeah, that when he took his really appendix out, right? Yeah. Anyway, Nisa's had her gallbladder out, so. Anyway, I feel really good. The first little while waking up is terrible. I didn't enjoy that at all because it's just disoriented and it feels weird. But other than that, everything's good. And uh, looking forward to, I can have coffee tonight, apparently. It seemed kind of odd to give me coffee tonight, but anyway, I haven't had one in a while. I'm allowed to drink water now already. Not allowed to eat till tomorrow, right? So, anyway, there's your update. Feeling pretty good. Looking forward to getting out of here, but I am shackled to the hospital for uh, at least two days. Yeah, you saw it. Look at its socks. Let me see. Well, at least one thing's consistent. Hospital food is not the greatest in any country. Got me a bowl of oatmeal. It's actually not terrible. The first bite, I was like, what? This, I have no idea. She said it was Kiesel, which doesn't translate to anything in English, so I haven't got a clue. It's some kind of a hot drink, I guess. And this is apparently an omelet. It looks like a hump of cheese, but I have no idea. Being looked after reasonably good here. Got a real sore back and I can't, normally I can just twist and crack it a little bit and make it feel better, but I can't do that right now because the front hurts too bad. Other than that, I'm not in a whole lot of pain, just my back mostly. I didn't sleep with beans, maybe four hours last night. It's all I could get. And I'm so stiff and sore this morning. So hopefully today they can give me something to help me sleep. All right, update. I already forget what it's called. Key, key sift or something like that. It's really yummy. No idea what it is. And um, the oatmeal's growing on me. It's actually not too bad either. Could be because I haven't eaten for 20 hours, I think. I'm so hungry. That was the other thing last night. I couldn't sleep. My top of my stomach was just, oh, so hungry. I like food. And I haven't tried this yet, but I will in a minute. It's not bad either. Out there. And, um, yeah, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I mentioned to the doc, put an uncomfortable bed, and they said maybe they can do something. I said, I don't think it'll make a difference. Every hospital bed's uncomfortable. It's nothing like your own bed at home, right? So, hopefully, tomorrow, hopefully. Well, there you have it. I most certainly would never order this in a restaurant. But it could be worse. It's actually not bad. So, maybe hospital food in Russia is actually better. I haven't spent a lot of time in the hospital, but I know every time Anissa has a baby, then they're in there and I usually have some of her food with her or they bring me an extra plate. And it's usually horrible, horrible food. You think it's good, but then it's like, Ugh. so it passes the mark. Not too bad. All right, breakfast done, sitting in there pretty good. So looking forward to getting out of here still though, but I'm gonna go make a cup of coffee here shortly or a cup of tea maybe, not sure yet. I uh, just gonna say that Oh man, my back is so sore. The uh, the care here is really good. And uh, I really appreciate that. The timeliness of Russian medical care in the Western world has asked about medical care here. So I only have a brief window uh, that, I, that I've, I've learned about it, right? But um, I find that it's very timely. It's, uh, it's a good level of care. The hospital is definitely not new, but you know what, in Canada we have a lot of new hospitals, a lot of nice new buildings, but the care is not there. And you wait hours and hours and hours for anybody to come see you, or you wait months and months to see a specialist. Here it's been very fast, very efficient. 
uh, you know, so I'd rather they spent the money on that, on the doctors and nurses and, uh, and equipment rather than on a building. I don't really care how old the hospital is. Uh, I want someone to take care of me, right? So, uh, very impressed so far. Uh, the only thing I would say is a lack of dignity. The whole, you know, drop your clothes and walk into surgery pretty much naked. Uh, mm. Very undignified and, and still strange. And then I, I was asleep coming back to the room, but apparently I wasn't very well covered up coming back in either. Uh, that just seems very odd. So it's something that probably should be worked on. Maybe that's a cultural thing. I have no idea, but it doesn't take much to throw a blanket on somebody. But other than that, very impressed. Doctors been in a number of times and nurses and yeah, very good. Well, we already made it all the way to lunchtime. It's a good time to do some uh, Bible reading. That's what I brought my book for. I brought my Bible along so they haven't spent a whole lot of time reading it yet. Just getting started now. But they finally brought lunch. I also managed to put a shirt on, so we're doing good. Changed the bandages. Wounds look absolutely amazing. And there's no stitches, which I thought was interesting. The, uh, oh, there is. I don't understand. I was like, did you use glue? No, no, no. So it's some kind of a dissolvable stitch, but I can't see any stitches. So it's, anyway, at least they don't have to be pulled out, which is handy. The care here is still, I mean, it's just phenomenal. Everybody's just so nice, so kind, so it's been really good. During my launch, at first they just gave me a bowl of soup, and I thought, oh man, this, this big farm kid ain't gonna survive on that. But they did bring me this too, which looks like rice or something, and I have no idea what that is. We'll find out. And then this is this stuff again, which I found is delicious. It's not tea, it's uh, ki ki sit or something. I don't know, it smells like apples. I said to Anissa earlier, it's almost, well, if you're in Canada, in America, you would know what apple pie is. Here I've been served apple pie, but it's more like apple cake. Our apple pies are way more moist. I don't know, hard to explain, but if you're in the West, you know what I'm talking about. So this kind of smells and tastes a little bit like the filling in an apple pie, if that makes any sense. It's delicious. And uh, this looks like a chicken soup and I don't know, something else. So I'm gonna go eat lunch. And the ladies also brought me some coffee. That's different here in Canada. I would bring my own clothes. I would probably be a oh, toothbrush, things like that, right? My own stuff. But as far as food and drink, they bring it all to you. They have a generally, at least in the maternity ward, I don't have never really been in the hospital for anything other than that. It's just with Anissa. But they'll have a fridge with some snacks in it, and juice in it, uh, milk, sometimes crackers. Uh, they bring three meals a day, just like they're doing here. And they'll bring you tea and coffee at that time as well. And then, uh, I don't know about water. I guess it'd probably be, I'm not sure actually. It'd probably a fountain or something. So here's a little differently. You're supposed to bring your own stuff. I didn't know that. I was supposed to bring my own cup, I guess, and my own utensils, maybe, uh, and my own coffee fixings. So I said to them, I was like, hey, the doc said I could have, have coffee. And they're like, oh yeah, no problem. Where's your cup? I was like, I don't have a cup. Okay, where's your coffee? So I don't have any coffee. So anyway, they were super nice. They loaned me a cup till I leave, and they gave me a spoon till I leave. And, and uh, this, I was using their coffee this morning. They just brought me some for myself. So very nice. I'm gonna go eat. All right, Thursday evening update. Still in the hospital, confined to my little box. Uh, all in all, feeling pretty good. And uh, I managed to actually have a bit of a nap for about uh, maybe an hour and a half, two hours, something like that. So I was pretty happy about that. Uh, yeah, they brought supper up. Basically the same thing as lunch, I believe. Tasted good. Not much else to tell you. Just hanging out in here and uh, waiting. <laughs> Wait until tomorrow, looking forward to go home. I don't, uh, well, I just like being home. I enjoy being with my wife and my kids. So hopefully tomorrow I get to go home.